Yeah, we now turn our attention to top flight football in the land of wood and water. And yeah, we had a lot of water last week. Match week five in the rare nephew Jamaica Premier League got underway on Sunday. Let's have a look at those results. Portmore United 2 0 over Malines United, Treasure Beach and Dun Beholden nil all. Arnett Gardens brilliant in their 3 1 win over Montego Bay United. Limehall Academy and Cavalier 1 1. A 90th, well, at a time goal earning Cavalier that draw. And Mount Pleasant going four from four with a 2 0 victory over Harborview, the match of the round. And uh, Mount Pleasant getting the victory there. So they leave the table on 12 points ahead of Portmore United on nine, Waterhouse on seven. Tivoli Gardens there in fourth position ahead of Arnett Gardens Cavalier in sixth position. Uh, those are the playoff spots, the top six. And then in red, Don Beholden and Malines, they are taking up the early relegation positions. Yeah, there is a live game going on as we speak. Humble Line taking on Tivoli Gardens. That game is locked at 1-1. As you can see, they're in the first half of that encounter still. And uh, we've gotten two goals, so we'll see exactly how that one will finish. Let's talk about what happened on the weekend, though. And joining us to do that is Dwight Jeremiah. He covered the Mount Pleasant versus Harborview encounter. And uh, Dwight, another efficient performance coming from Mount Pleasant. They are champions of the Jamaica Premier League. There are many who feel that they will win this title again. And they have definitely made an impressive start. Yeah, Ricardo, it's, it's good being here and hi to Mar Mariah as well. But yeah, on the weekend, it was really more than just an efficient performance. I think what it showed, though, it was a really a test of their squad or more so a display of the depth in their squad and quality that they have in their squad because they're missing a, a few players who are away on international duties. But really, the only thing you could say took them a little bit longer. But that goal you're looking at there from Kimani Bailey, I mean, he's, he's to me the player in form. He's a form player in the Premier League. And I tell you what, he has three goals so far. You could create a reel of his three goals and they probably would find themselves one, two, three in terms of the top goals so far this season. Uh, another wonderful left foot strike, this time a belter from just at the edge of the 18-yard box. Uh, gave Barrett no, Barnett no chance in goal. But yeah, it was an efficient performance from them. And their coach, Theodore Whitmore, and I had a chance to speak with their owner, uh, Mr. Gull after the game and he and Whitmore are singing the same song that they feel despite missing a few players this was their best performance of the season so far. Yeah, Kimona Bailey talk to us about him and his transition to Mount Pleasant and whether he has looked a better player um, since he's gone to Mount Pleasant or were we just not having a close enough look at him before? I guess we weren't given the chance to have a close enough look on a consistent basis. While he was at Dumbe Holden, he came off the bench a lot of time. He has found his footing um, at, at Mount Pleasant and is a trusted player for Theodore Whitmore and his coaching staff. So he's, he's probably one of the first names, if not the first name now on the team sheet because of his current form. But yeah, he has really settled in at Mount Pleasant, has gotten more game time and he's showing his quality. I think it, it, you would struggle to find a better left-footed player um, in the league at the moment. The week before, or, or two, yeah, about the game before they played um, at Draxall, before this one, scored a wonderful volley from across from Devante Campbell. I, I, I was on call at the time and I was, well, not tempted, I did call it mbappe S because it resembled that strike of Mbappe in the World Cup final um, just concluded in 2022. But yeah, he's he's a lovely player. And and yesterday with them missing Phillips, he was the catalyst for Mount Pleasant and always a protagonist. Wasn't so much flying in the first half, but as the game got to a point where they needed someone to unlock it, he stepped up. Yeah, I remember seeing him for Don Beholden in the final in 2022 um, against the Harborview. And I thought, although Don Beholden lost that match, his performance um, stood out for me in that game. So hopefully he'll be able to keep up this level. When we look across the league, though, um, coming into the JPL, I thought the likes of Harborview and Cavalier, who were involved in Caribbean Cup, CFU um, Caribbean Cup action, would really... Um, fly out of the blocks in the Jamaica Premier League, but it hasn't been the case. Are you surprised that Cavalier and Harborview especially have struggled as much of, as they have in the early goings of this league? 
I, somewhat, yes, I would have expected them to put a decent squad together because they knew they were going to compete in the Caribbean Club Championship. Would have speed lamented that he had suffered a bit of fatigue and he expected the loss they suffered against um, Montego Bay United in their first game, said that he was expecting them to have a slow start. Um, but, you know, I felt that they, they would, should have blown out the blocks against Montego Bay United. He did say, though, it was nine games in a month that he had to play. Um, and that really took a lot out of them. He said they got a break from the because of the weather, and he said that rest would have helped them. He expected to come into this game um, doing better, but they really didn't really get out the blocks. They really didn't really get out the starting blocks for this one. It was really a, 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 a poor performance from them. Um, one of the poorest performances I've seen from, from Cavalier. They really turned the ball over a lot. They didn't get going, you know. Cavalier, a youthful unit, would normally try to run teams over. And they got lucky on this one. That goal you just showed. I mean, I was on call and referee Hayden really got that one wrong. Um, it was when Alder Robinson scoring off the arm. I mean, it was clear as day, as George said, on call with me. And the referee was in an excellent position to make the call. When I asked Wood of Speed after the game, he said to me, well, it happened to us and we take our luck when we get it. So, yeah, I mean... There is the referee, a clear view of Ronaldo Robinson there. And yeah, I don't know why Hayden didn't make that call in the end. Um, Limor, which I think have been playing really well, I must tell you though, in open play, I think what they need is a proper number nine. Aaron Elliott has been doing the job for them. He was missing from this game with a red card. They brought in a, a youngster, Ronaldo Brown. He looked really well up there and I think they could um, make something of him. But I think in open play, Limal, a newcomer to the league, is giving as much as they're getting, uh, just not finishing off and should have walked away with three points from this game. Yeah, the one thing I will say, Dwight Jeremiah, is that you always seem to be on the scene when the referees get these decisions wrong <laughs> and apparently you know better than anybody when I'm, else. When I'm in the commentary box or on the sidelines. <laughs> <laughs> you said it, not me. We'll take a break on the Sportsman Zone. More to come.